There's nothing better than enjoying the fruits of your labors, especially when those fruits are actually vegetables from your garden. Unfortunately, there are plenty of pesky critters that love the vegetables of your labors as much as you do. Hi Aurora, I'm Diana Denwood, Senior Water Conservation Specialist at Aurora Water, and in today's video, I'll cover the most common pests in three categories, animal, vegetable, and fungal, and what to do if they're bugging you. Japanese beetles are small, shiny insects that are very destructive. They feed on most foliage, but they prefer apple trees, beans, grapes, and raspberries. Look for leaves that have been skeletonized or only have their veins remaining. They aren't shy, so you'll see them devouring your veggies both day and night. Japanese beetles often lay their eggs in grass lawns, so by having a vegetable garden instead of a lawn, you're actually helping reduce their numbers. Hand-picking beetles is often the most effective way to remove them. Then you can drown them in a solution of soapy water. Most experts agree that Japanese beetle traps aren't that effective. Their use of pheromones will more often lure more beetles into your garden. Aphids are tiny, soft-bodied insects that vary in color from green to red to dark gray. They feed on many vegetable types and in large swarms can be very destructive or even kill a weak plant. If you have aphids, first try to gently brush them off and then rinse away their residue with a garden hose. They won't be able to climb back to get at that plant again. Purchasing ladybugs, which is an aphid's natural predator, is an option, but they often don't stick around your yard. Grubs are beetle larvae. They will eat your vegetable roots. As you're tilling and planting in the spring and summer, be on the lookout for these guys. They are white, chubby, all curled up and about two inches in length. It's nearly impossible for the layperson like you or me to differentiate between different grub species. Some will grow up into beetles that are beneficial for your garden, and others will grow into beetles that are destructive. That's why I recommend removing the grubs from your garden when you find them and put them in a different area of your yard. They won't be able to tra travel back to your vegetable garden. If you have a major infestation of any of these kinds of insects I've listed above and my methods haven't worked for you, go ahead and try a low toxicity insecticidal soap or neem oil. Rabbits and squirrels are cute critters, but they love to eat your vegetables. For rabbits, create a physical barrier, like a chicken wire fence that's been buried six inches into the ground. Hot pepper spray or wax will help keep those pesky animals from chomping on the same plant twice, but it does need to be reapplied. Weeds, they compete for nutrients, water, and light, and they can even harbor pests. Some of the most common culprits are bindweed and thistle. They are both perennials, which means they'll come back every year. The older the plant, the stronger their root system, so it may take a few years to totally eradicate them from your garden. Dandelions are also common, but they're annuals and they'll be easier to pull. When tackling your weeds, use all of the following techniques. First, pull them when they're young. Use a shovel or a trowel to get the entire root. Two, mulch at least with three inches to inhibit weed growth. Straw or grass clippings work really well. Spray the herbicide glyphosate, which is the primary ingredient in Roundup, around um, on perennial weeds, but not around an organic garden. And try spreading corn gluten. It's a non-toxic pre-emergent weed inhibitor, which means it prevents weeds from germinating. Obviously, don't spread it around where you're trying to germinate your veggie seeds. Powdery mildew is a fungal disease that affects a wide range of plants. It thrives in warm climates and spreads rapidly in humid areas. It typically shows up on the leaves of vining plants like cucumbers and melons, but it can affect many different kinds of vegetables. It's non-toxic, but it will damage your plants over time. Avoid watering plants from overhead, which can increase humidity, and prune overcrowded plants to increase air circulation. To control powdery mildew, remove all the infected parts as soon as you notice the powdery bloom on the leaves. You may also use fungicides, including sulfur, lime sulfur, neem oil, and potassium bicarbonate. If you don't want to use fungicides, you can make your own bicarbonate solution by combining one teaspoon of baking soda with one quart of water. Like with most things, prevention is key. Here are my rules of thumb. Use mulch to keep the area moist. 
avoid overhead watering, avoid monocultures, which means raising a lot of the same crop in one area, harvest on time to um, avoid rotting plants in your garden, rotate crops to reduce the likelihood of disease establishing in the soil, and choose disease resistant varieties. Remember, growing food instead of lawn is using your water wisely, and you'll get to enjoy the vegetables of your labors. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.